Brad, what's going on? We got ourselves a blocked run here. It wasn't me. <laughs> I did not plan this. I, I'm pretty sure it's been staged. Well, welcome back, everybody. Joe Heilman here in my old stomping grounds north of Rugby, North Dakota with Brad Friddle. What are we doing today, Brad? Putting some wheat in the ground. Putting some wheat in the ground. Where uh, where are we? We're kind of in north of Rugby, a few miles north uh, northwest. Yep, about, uh, about 12 miles northwest of Rugby is where, the, where the main farmstead is at. Nice. So your family's been farming for how many years now? Oh, you know, it's generations. Been, you could I say. would be the third generation. Okay. So you farm this year, Dad? On this farmstead, still. anyways. Yep. Yeah. Yep. My dad, Steve, and I farm together. Um, he's kind of got his acres, and I've got mine, and pull the equipment together to make the dream happen. So Brad, you're running a, a Bordeaux air seeder. Yep. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Why did you choose Bordeaux? Why, why is it the right fit for your operation? Yeah, so this is the, the tool that puts the seed in the ground is a 5710, uh, 47 foot with mid-row banders, which is what we use for putting our, our nitrogen products down, whether it be urea or NH3. The cart is a 6450, so a 450 bushel cart, and that's set up with dual fans, and everything is variable rate capable. So the anhydrous is run through a Raven cooler system, and that we're able to do variable rate with mapping uh, through our TopCon system. It is a hoe drill, which in this part of North Dakota is become few and far between. A lot of people have kind of switched to the, the no-till disc drills, and for us, it's it's still been a good fit. Where it's it's a very simple, low maintenance machine. Tell us a little bit about the technology you got in the cab here. You got a, you got four, four or five monitors. I see different screens we're looking at. Yep. So the first one up on the top side is my camera system that I've got cameras out the back and then cameras inside the tanks. The other one I got the 2630 display, which is the John Deere. That is my guidance, and then I also do documentation through that as well. Yeah. And then the last one's the iPad that controls the blockage system. And I've had several people that have asked me about the blockage system and I know a lot of other companies have, are making their own factory blockage systems but yeah I've I've had this system now I think six or seven years I, the good news is I lose track of how long I've had it <laughs> but it's just it's a system that flat out works I mean it's uh, the conversation you said about the planter I mean that's the planters monitor and give you a seed count. Because each seed drops by the sensor, it tells you that's what's happening. Well, with an air seeder up until a system like this, I didn't, you don't have that. You, you, had didn't, your, you didn't know if you had, yeah. what kind of flow you had. Yep, yeah. and we've had it happen before where the primary runs that go from the, the seed tank up to the front of the bar, they'll wear through. And this was about four years ago, dad calls me on the radio and he, he said one of these towers is red or it's orange. What does that mean? He said, well, what? Tell me what? What is it saying? Well, it says it's 20% less than the rest. He said, okay, well, something's not right. We went out and looked here. There was a hole about that big in the side of the hose going to feed that tower. We put a new hose on it. Problem solved. Was was product blowing out of the hose? The, the product or were you was just losing air it, flow. It was the product was going out. The, the opening in the hose, the, the, the wore through spot in the hose, it was what it was blowing out. And we would have never, the chances of catching that are slim to none, you know. And until it's, you put it yep. away for the spring yep. or something, yeah. And it's the other part of it that I, I really enjoy is the mass flow reading that gives me on the top to where I know that if I keep my ground speed the same and my fan speed the same, that number will always stay the same. Yeah. And if that number changes, it goes higher or lower, something's, something's not right. So what are some examples of using the mass flow number where you, you caught some issues? 
I've had it happen, um, soybeans has been a big one where the, the seed treatment that's put on soybeans is, it's just, it's wetter, it's the consistency, sticky. yeah, it's sticky. And the, the metering auger at the bottom of the tank, it built up with a whole bunch of crud and then it wasn't grabbing as much seed out of the bottom of the tank. So right. the fan speed was the same, the ground speed was the same, the shaft RPM was the same, but that number dropped down, I think it was close to 50 or 100. Mm. And, okay, recalibrated the tank just to see what, but here the tank calibration was off by close to 20%. And it's, okay, we, we definitely have a problem here. We, need, <laughs> we either need to empty the tank so we can check that meter and, and yeah, we've, We've, we've pulled a lot of crud off those the flighting of that auger. We can't tell you exactly what's happening all the time, although we can pinpoint sometimes where there are issues if it's you know, because we're monitoring towers, for example, like here, all of his towers are hovering in the plus or minus 5%. 5%. And that, that we see that's pretty typical. It's, it's kind of like a planter. Yep. Your monitor, your planter says row three is leaving skips or, or, or it's overseeding. Now it's up to you to take that information and figure out Do something exactly it. what it is that's, why is it doing that? Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't hand you the answer, it just tells you that there's a problem. Yep, exactly. Got ourselves a blocked run here. It wasn't me. <laughs> I did not plan this. I, I'm pretty sure it's been staged. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. almost certain. So the blockage monitor was telling us we've got a blockage on tower four, right? Yep. Rubber from something. It's a new one. I haven't found one of those before. God bless that blockage monitor. All right, let's roll. And I promise I did not stage this. I did not sabotage I'm his not drill. So sure. I'm not so <laughs> sure. I did not sabotage Brad's drill, but we found this little piece of rubber stuck in uh, tower four. Showed us one run was plugged, and this was kind of curled up in one of the sensors. And I mean, those are the kinds of things you can't plan those things. I mean, uh, whether it's a chunk of fertilizer, a dead mouse that got into the seed or whatever. I mean, we've heard all kinds of stories. The year before we bought the system, I thought, ah, we've, we've been good. It's, things have been fine the way it is. Well, it was that same spring that a tower plugged up for about 50 acres, and we spent about a day with a pony drill from the 50s trying to fill in the skip that was left because we didn't catch that tower. So it's, it, it more than anything, it's in, in extra work and extra time, it saved itself. It's proved it's worth in just that. Yeah. And it's it's gotten to the point now where I'll I'll never run an air seeder without it again. I, I just, I've, I've convinced myself that at that point that it's more than anything, the peace of mind and knowing that the system is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We want to do everything we can to do everything right. We only get one chance to plant the crop every year. Yeah. And dollars and cents add up over time. And time is as much of a crucial factor as anything. If I was to find out I had a tower blocked, and then I got to figure out, okay, when did it start? How long ago? Which one? What route did I plant? So I can figure out how to go back and, and fill in that gap. It's just, it's not worth it anymore. Yeah, not only that, but bouncing between several different crops. We've got a window to get, make sure we get the wheat seeded, so that's ready by the first part of August. 
and then the canola is after that, then it's the dry beans, then the soybeans, then the corn. <laughs> That's probably different than a lot of people out there and having that many types of crops. Well, it's, it's a way for us, I mean, we're, it, it's a way of spreading out the season. I mean, like you said, we've got such a short growing season in North Central North Dakota that we can't put all of our eggs into one basket. I mean, it, this primarily used to be wheat, barley, canola type area. While any farm of any decent amount of acres, it's just, it's too small of a window. You, you, you can't get everything in in time. You can't get everything harvested in time. So that's, we kind of spread our risks. I hope you understand how much respect we need to have for these guys. Uh, the decisions that they're not just out here scratching dirt around all day. I mean, they have to make some really hard decisions. You just talked about a bunch of risk management uh, perspectives from Brad. In years like this year, it's that much more stressful to decide what to plan. Well, I really appreciate having uh, some time with you, Brad. It's good to catch up again and, Absolutely. and hear your stories and what's going on with the operation. Believe me, if it wasn't working, Brad, would, I'd be getting oh, yeah. an earful from yeah. Brad and, and others. I'd let you know. And uh, and we wouldn't have as many systems out there as we do. So we're very thankful for all our customers who put their faith in us for now almost a decade. <laughs>